beats us to the punch. Congrats, Gary. That was a real war. What made the difference in your favor tonight? Um, I was a stronger, um, harder man. I was stronger and a lot harder. I made it hard for myself. Got myself worked up before the fight. He was getting in my face, got me a little bit. Fight with emotion. Try to get I didn't use my brain, but I got the win. Sharing the ring with him after such a war, how much respect is there between you guys? Oh, massive respect. He's from the same town. It was a northeast derby. I've told him if he's welcome to come down and, um, you know, he's a young 28-year-old, very, very game, very tough man. Um, I'm willing to, you know, help him out in the gym, sparring and training. I'll make him a better fighter. You were coming down in weight for this fight. He was coming up in weight, so you kind of met in the middle. How difficult was it for you? Well, I, I, I was coming down from my first fight, but I was doing the weight what I should have been doing. I wasn't so less coming down, but it's more of my natural weight. Um, and I felt big and strong at it. How did you feel tonight compared to your first bare knuckle fight? Um, I, I'm at my weight now, and like I said in the beginning, um, 145 pound, I don't see anyone that I trouble that and bother me. I, I can walk through shots, um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm tough, I can take a shot, I'm game. I made it hard there, like I said, but um, bring the next, I could do with someone up there now, get me a tough fight, hard fight. You know, I sold 250 tickets, I'm a big seller. And a, and a good fighter, so I want someone in the top five. Um, but you know, I could ideally do with someone in the top five, you know, for a real test. So you also prepared with Danny Christie. How important is it to have such quality fighters in a camp as well? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we do no sparring um, or nothing for this fight, but you know, we're on the end of a phone with pals. Um, you know, we're, we're both a similar sort of lad, similar sort of upbringing, and you know, we're both tough, rough men. Um, Danny will do the business tonight, um, and I, I, like I said, he'll. Uh, I've no, he'll have no trouble winning. Now we see that search and destroy tattoo right here on your chest. Tell me a little bit about that tattoo. Well, that's just me all over search and destroy. Do you know what I mean? Um, I like the ones what I don't have to search so much for. I want somebody who's going to stand and trade with me, you know, um, and, and, and me fire will fire. And then you'll see the best out of me. You're also a big Leeds United fan, right? Tell us about Leeds. I love Leeds. Absolutely love Leeds. I love the, you know, I'm a, I'm a massive Leeds football fan. Um, you know, so it's all good. There's actually a story that I read about, a fun story with you and Robbie Brown. He actually, you forgot a gum shield uh, before a fight and he borrowed you his. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. For me, gum shield. Um, and I sent him a message saying, uh, thank you for the gum shield. What weight are you doing? He said, I'll fight anyone at any weight. I said, so let's get it on. Simple as that. What motivates you to do this every single day? Well, if I'm not doing something like this, I don't get motivated. I'm a fight man. I've been a fight man for years. Um, I've got a fire in my belly, I'm 38 year old last week and I've still got my chin, still got my heart, so bring them on. Now tell us about bare knuckle fighting, you need more heart or you need more skill? Um, I think it's a mixture of both, I have a lot more skill than what I showed tonight. Like I said, it got in my face and I fought with a bit of emotion, I got stuck in, like I would in a street fight, but I can box as well, um, but I just, I, I can mix, or whatever, if someone wants to fight, I'll fight. But if I also can box if I need to be. I'm Gary Fox, this is Ben Knuckle News. Nobody beats us to the punch. Congrats Danny, what a win in your BKFC debut. How did it feel in there with the bare knuckles? Yeah, yeah, it felt good. Um, I felt really relaxed in there. You know, in the fourth or fifth round, I was talking to him. Once I settled in, I got into that flow state and uh, I felt really good. How were you preparing for John Ferguson? Did you watch some of his earlier fights? Yeah, I only watched one of his fights um, and that was enough, you know, just to see what he were about. Uh, I knew he were dangerous. He beat a very good man in Tom Scott last time. Um, so I knew that, and Tom's a very good boxer. So I knew that he was going to cause me problems and, uh, and make it a rough fight. But I feel like I outworked him and I had the accuracy on him. You have a massive uh, MMA background, fought in the UFC and all different martial arts. What makes Bare Knuckle so special? Uh, the thing about Bare Knuckle is it's just raw. You know, people understand it. MMA, it takes a lot to understand MMA, to appreciate the grappling, the wrestling. But with Bare Knuckle, it's easy for your everyday man to understand. You know what I mean? It's just bare fist connecting with bone. And uh, I think it's the most raw form of combat there is. That's why it's so popular. How did you react when you got that call and that opportunity for that fight? Yeah, I mean, it's been on the cards for a long time. Um, 
And uh, yeah, obviously our coach Rico Franco, who's doing very well in this organisation. And uh, it's always been on the cards. So yeah, it was good to finally uh, get in and do it. How important is it to be with fighters like Rico Franco to bounce off of each other and kind of elevate your game? Yeah, it's good. I mean, like I say, I've coached Rico for the last sort of 12 years. Um, and I've got a gym full of people just like Rico. I've created a community of people, all like-minded. And uh, it's great to just be a part of that and, and train and fight alongside them. I'm not just the head coach. I'm like one of the one of the fighters with them. How much fun is it for you and how much does it give you back also to the community when you coach people, when you work with younger people? Yeah, coaching, that's my life. Um, fighting for me has always been, you know, on the back seat. I, I got, you know, to the UFC, I did all these fights. I did that as my own coach. I was coaching a full-time team while training myself with my own fighters. Um, so I'm very proud of what I've done. You know, I, I've got here, you know, I've had coaches who have helped me along the way. Dex Spellman has helped me massively for this fight. But um, yeah, I feel like I've created a great team. And uh, even without me now, when I step away, that team will continue. Tonight, having those five rounds in the bank right now, you just told me you, you think you had him close uh, to being knocked down a couple times. Well, what was missing and how much is this going to elevate your game for the future? Yeah, I mean, John, John is a very, very tough man. He's very awkward. Um, I felt like I couldn't get many clean punches on him. So, yeah, he, he did a good job at the end of the day. Um, but I came here in, the, in my mind, I knew this was going to go five rounds. I knew he's very hard to hit, very awkward. Um, so, yeah, I did what I needed to do. What did you do different in training camp than, let's say, for an MMA fight? Nothing. I train like this all the time. I've always... The reason why Rico is so successful at bare knuckle is we always train like this anyway. Boxing with little gloves on. We've always fought and trained like this. So this is not new to us. This is not boxing. This is more like MMA boxing than it is like professional boxing. So that's why we're good at it. Why is Rico going to become a world champion? Rico's going to become a world champion because he's got this skill, but he's also got the will and he cannot be broken. He's gone through so much. You know what I mean? That guy will be world champ. You just cannot stop him. You cannot kill. Rico Franco cannot be killed. And you have known him for so long. What do you think about his mentality? Why is he so strong up there? Rico's just got a strong mentality because, you know, he's been through so much in his life. He's had so many fights, ups and downs, highs and lows. He's had colitis. He's had his bowels removed. He nearly died. He's come back again and again. We've had so many problems that people don't even know outside of fighting. He fell off a cliff months ago, nearly died. But all these things happened to him and he's still here fighting, training. You know, I can say he's like a cat with nine lives. I think he's on his last one though now. What motivates you to do this every single day? Is it your family? Uh, motivates me to do this every day is this is my life. This is not a hobby. This is literally, since I have left school, I live and breathe martial arts and fighting. This is not just something I do, this is me. For anybody who has never heard of bare knuckle before, doesn't know what it is, maybe it just thinks it's a brutal sport, some people going in there and punching each other, How, what would you tell them? I'd say watch the fight with me and John, look at the mutual respect between us. Me and John are friends now, we've just had a five round bare knuckle fight, punching each other. I've got six stitches in my face because of him, but we're friends. Friends for life now, that's it. That's how this sport works, so stop seeing it as, you know, brutal man-on-man -man fighting. This is martial arts. We choose to do this. Number one, we're entertaining you guys, but number two, because we love it. This is Danny Mitchell with Bare Knuckle News, and nobody beats us to the punch. Congrats, Johnny. Two BKFC fights, two wins, and both here in Leeds. Something very special for you, right? Yeah, man, it was absolutely amazing, yeah, buzzing. So you had him down in the first round and then you finished the fight in the second. Walk us through that fight. Did you see the openings? Yeah, um, it's quite hard to remember what the fight actually went like, you know, after you sort of like blank it out. But um, I just found myself in the first round, found my feet, uh, caught him, I caught him to the body, which he went down. Uh, and then I just took it steady. I knew he came aggressive then. Uh, and then it's second round. Yeah, I don't, I don't know even, I don't even know what, how far into the second round I stopped him. But I caught him with a lovely shot, finished him and he didn't get up. 
I know he was a late replacement opponent. You were supposed to fight Ben Barner. So was it a bit difficult then to adjust to a whole different style and opponent? No, I don't really prepare for styles anyway. I just fight and then, you know, we're getting in there, we're throwing hands. It's not, you can only prepare so much for a style. I, 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 you don't know what's going to happen at night. Who do you want next? You have two fights now, two wins. You look really good in both. So what do you feel like you're, you're ready for next? I'm ready for anyone. I can beat anyone. Uh, obviously, it's going to have to be one of the top boys. Uh, I think uh, who's got the belt? Um, Ricardo's got the belt. I'd love to fight for that belt at some point. I think he'll be doing. I think he'll be going on to doing different things. Though Ricardo, it's fair play to him. He deserves it. Conor Turney would be a good fight for me. Conor Turney, that would be that would be a good next fight. That would be a real good fight for me. Yeah, I need a big name. If you're not elite, you aren't beating me. You know what I mean? I'm going to knock you out. So I love a good challenge. I want to fight someone like Turney. Now we know you have a big boxing background. You kind of lost the love for the sport for a few years, but it's the fire back now. Yeah, this is different. This is a whole different sport. This is uh, this is real fighting. I love it. What's so fascinating? What do you love about bare knuckle? I like the fact that you can hit them once and they go on floor. You know what I mean? Without no gloves on. And it just feels very different to somebody who's never done it. What's the difference between connecting to somebody's face with a glove and without a glove? The damage it does. You said before the fight, this time you're going to keep on training. Last time you were off for a little while, but you want to keep staying in shape, training and keeping active. Yeah, that's it now. I'll be stupid not to, you know, I want to fight some good kids, so I need to stay fit. I, I'm, I'm literally boxing, getting on piss and then boxing again. I can't do that no more. I haven't had a drink for four months now, so, you know, I'm going to keep on this. I'm not drinking tonight. I'm going to have a drink at Christmas. Other than that, I'm on my boxing. I'm Johnny Graham with Bare Knuckle News and no one beats us to the punch.